have you been asked to speak in sacrament meeting? If so, this is the only video you will ever need on how to deliver the most killer professional youth talk for church that you have ever heard and have ever delivered to this point in your life because I am a professional public speaker. I've studied it in college. I do this for a living and believe it or not, every single time that you give a talk in sacrament or a lesson at church or go to bear your testimony, you are using those muscles of public speaking and so many people, so many youth, so many adult speakers make these mistakes that I'm going to talk to you about today on how to correct them and they don't even know it and they don't know how close they are to an amazing talk because they're doing some of these things that they don't even recognize are pulling away from their ability to deliver their message. So I am so excited to give you my best tips on how to write the most killer youth talk for church that you've ever written. So let's get going. This is like what I'm crazy passionate about. So I hope you're ready for these eight tips on how to have the most amazing talk ever. First and foremost, this is my number one tip for a reason. And I want you to watch this Sunday. Somebody is going to break this rule. You ready? And it, it's going to be the youth speaker and the adult speaker. Just hold me to that one. But don't admit to any crunch time. What do I mean by that? How many times have we all stood up and said, man, ugh, Bishop called me on Thursday to give this speech or this not speech this talk and so I I haven't had a lot of time for prepared but in that time blah 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 right so one poor bishop looks bad two you look bad um but people admit to crunch time all the time because they think that by doing that it'll excuse any um lack in their talk but it actually does the opposite people then are cued right at the very first. Oh, I'm not gonna pay attention because this person didn't put a lot of time into their talk. And our time is valuable. Even though we're a captive audience at church, never, never, never give people a reason to tune you out. And you do that in the first 10 seconds by saying, oh guys, I, uh, I really was busy this week and so I haven't had a lot of time to prepare for this. Bishop called me at the last second. Just don't go there. Do not admit to any time crunch. Do all those things absolutely happen? Yes. Have they happened to me? Yes, I had a bishop call me Sunday morning when I was a senior in high school and say, hey, I forgot you're the youth speaker today. Is that okay? That sucked. That was a total time crunch, but don't admit to it because the minute you admit to not having enough time to prepare, that you didn't put as much thought into this talk as you would like to, People are gonna tune you out. And that is the last thing you wanna do because if you are gonna give a talk, by golly, we are gonna give the best talk ever. My second tip, you are gonna say, whoa, for reals? Um, and yes, I'm dead serious. Avoid the jokes. Just don't go there. Now, can your talk still be super funny? Yes, can it still have elements of humor? Yes. But I'm telling you right now, avoid those first icebreaker jokes because they're overdone, because they aren't the purpose of why you're there to speak in sacrament. We aren't there to entertain people with our humor. We're there to bear testimony. We're there to teach and instruct. And so just skip the jokes. Even though you might have a most killer sacrament opening joke, just, just skip it. Now, I love to incorporate humor in everything I do, but I love to put humor into real life situations, like maybe telling a story where I come out kind of looking silly or I assume something that, you know, wasn't really true, right? Those are really safe jokes. Everybody can get those jokes. You're not making fun of anybody and you're not just like overkilling this joke of, you know, the you all know them. We all have heard like the first I'm gonna start my sacrament talk joke. I'm just telling you right now, just, no, you don't need that. You don't need that at all. You can just start your talk without admitting you've had a time crunch and without trying to break the ice and share a joke. Okay, I hope you're listening. 
I hope you are taking notes and I hope that this tip hits you hard because I mean it to. Never, never wing it. Never go up there hardly prepared, glancing through your talk one time. Never, ever, ever deliver a talk like that. One, it's not fair to your audience because so many times we think, well, I'm the youth speaker and this talk is five minutes or less, right? So it won't take a lot of prep. I'm here to tell you the opposite, that the shorter your message is, the shorter your speech, the shorter your talk, the shorter your testimony, the more precise and thought out it has to be. So don't fall into that trap of, oh, this is a two minute talk. I'll just wing it and tell this story from scout camp, right? Never wing it. Prepare what you're going to say think through it, regardless if you have the morning of Sunday where your bishops called you and told you you're speaking that day, or you have a whole week, put all the preparation you can towards it. Because one, like I said, it's not fair to your audience. You have this captive audience at church and they deserve to be edified and uplifted and to have your best self brought forward. Two, don't do that to yourself. This is something that we don't talk about a lot, but as a public speaker, and when you're giving a talk at church, when you're giving a lesson, you are a public speaker. It's vital to know that the moment you stand up, people are, are taking stock of you. They're judging you and they're reflecting like what they know about you already to what you're saying. And you don't want to mess that up. There's people in your ward that love and adore you. And are they going to love and adore you even if you fumbled and said two words and then sat back down? Absolutely, but you owe it to yourself to show people that, hey, I'm really proud to stand up here and I'm gonna deliver a message even if I'm scared. Like that speaks volumes about you. So don't do it to your audience and don't do it to yourself. Never, ever, ever wing a talk, no matter how short it is. On a side note about that, um, whether you're giving a talk or lesson, those are very obvious, like I need to prep. I want to just throw it out there that sometimes with fast and testimony meetings, you get up there and the spirit just says like, go out there and bear your testimony. And you're like, I don't know what to talk about, right? I have found that that is a more rare experience. Instead, a lot of people share the experience that they're sitting there and they feel like, yeah, today I should bear my testimony. And so you have some time and you start to gather thoughts about what you'd like to share your testimony on. Don't wing your testimony while you're sitting there thinking and knowing in your heart, okay, I'm going to go up after this person does, or maybe in two people, you can sit there and say, okay, I'd like to talk about this, this, and then I'll close it. So you can prepare any type of message, even in a split second. It's just taking that second to organize your thoughts, especially when it comes to like, my heart is pounding and I feel like I should bear my testimony. So I felt like you should know that because often we, we treat it like winging it is the best answer and it's really not. You always have a time and seconds to gather your thoughts. So I've talked so much about like what not to do at the start of your talk. Let's talk about how to start your talk and that is with a story. Now, some of the topics that we get to talk about at church might be new, they might be topics that maybe you don't have a story about, and that's okay. If you can't pull out a personal story, which I say is always like our first go-to of like, okay, this is, I've been asked to speak on faith. Do I have a personal experience that required faith or where I learned about faith? Okay, you know, like I can pull from that. Maybe our talk is about the restoration of the gospel. And you're like, wow, I don't have a personal story about that one, right? Or maybe you do. Then you go from, okay, I've checked my personal catalog of my brain and I can't think of a story. Okay, now I'm gonna check the personal catalog of my family. Is there somebody in my family who has a really cool story that ties back to the restoration? Okay, no, right? Then we can move on to the scriptures, to church history, to doctrine, to maybe some cool stories that you've heard that caveat you can prove are true and trace back to a source there's nothing worse than somebody standing up and saying one time i heard this story and i think it went like this you want to come in there with authority of knowing the stories and facts especially if you're pulling from church history so 
Start with a story and I kicked the camera. Start with a story and just have it be one that's really compelling. It can be super short. Stories are as short as the other day I went to the grocery store and I ran into this cute old lady and I helped her with her groceries. That was a story that I told you in 10 seconds, right? So keep your stories short, keep them compelling because this is how you're going to introduce your topic. This is how you're gonna pull people in. As human beings, we're hardwired for storytelling. That's our favorite way to learn. And so start with a story if you can. Now, the next trick to balance in your talk is to aim for 50-50. And this right here is like a mega secret because I learned this from some of the big boys of speaking like John, by the way, and Tom, I almost said Tom Hanks. <laughs> Hank Smith, I would love to meet Tom Hanks, but Hank Smith shared this, um, that with your lessons, and I would say with your sacrament talks, you should aim for 50-50, which is 50% I'm learning something or teaching something that maybe they didn't know before, right? We're going over facts and scriptures and what happened and context and history. Like we're learning something. And then 50% is feeling. 50% is sharing a really touching story. 50% is entertaining. 50% is like the glue that ties together the facts. So we want to feel something. We want to be able to feel the spirit. We want to feel the, the message that you're sharing. And that comes through stories, personal experience, um, insight into scriptures, maybe your thoughts and questions and like discussion, right? That comes with our facts. So we want to balance this 50, 50. Now in a lesson, that's a little bit more clear, right? But in a talk, you can do the same thing. So you start with a story, right? And maybe this one's a personal story. So then you hit them with some doctrine or some really cool quotes that you found about the topic. And then we go back to maybe a story or, you know, like maybe we do more doctrine, but then we finish with a story or a personal experience or your testimony, right? That is what you're looking for in a talk because sometimes when we go too far to either extreme, sometimes when it's, all lesson and all doctrine and all, did you know this and this and this and this? Those can be really cool. Like I, I kind of love and geek out on those kind of lessons, but it can really lack some heart, especially in a, in a talk because people, I mean, you've got a lot of people in your audience and you might have gospel nerds like me that are like, yes, I love to know all the facts, but probably more than half of your audience it's just there to feel something. So you don't want to exclude them. If we sway to the other side and do 100% personal experiences, personal stories, that's really cool, but it, it lacks substance. It can lack direction and it can lack that conviction that ties it all together, right? If I just stood up and gave a talk about my life and Actually, now that I think about that, I've, I've had that experience. I don't know if you have. Um, maybe it's when a new couple's introducing themselves in the ward and they just share how they met, how cute their kids are, what they do for a living, and then they wrap it up with their testimony. You're kind of left going, oh, I loved learning all that info about you, but I didn't walk out of here edified because there was no doctrine behind that. So. It can be a little bit tricky, but I want you to like, look, as you've mapped out your talk, I want you to maybe put a circle or a star by like, okay, what is my substance and what is my feeling? And make sure that you've got a good balance of both. Okay, when I was sitting down and I was planning this video and I was like, thinking of really good talks and thinking about talks that you're like, whoa, what just happened there? Um, I really debated putting this one in, but it's something I really stand by. And it's something that um, is in the manuals of the church a lot. It talks about sticking to doctrine all the time, especially if you have like a teacher's manual, it says stick to doctrine. So I'm putting in this tip, which is to stick to scriptures and prophetic quotes. 
hear me out. There's amazing, 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 amazing people in this world who have the most enlightened and spiritual thoughts out there. But when it comes to a talk given in sacrament or a church lesson, you want to err on the side of sticking to doctrine, of sticking to quotes from the prophet and the Quorum of the Twelve, auxiliary leaders, people within the church, because when you start to quote from people outside of that circle, one, your audience might not know that person. So instantly there's a lack of understanding. Maybe there's a lack of credibility because you're like, I don't know who like Jane Doe is, you know, like your audience might be thinking that where you're like, oh, don't you know that this is an amazing religious scholar at Harvard, right? Or like there, there's a lack of understanding, a lack of credibility. And I'm telling you in all these church manuals, especially as like, um, I've had like callings to be a teacher in the church before. And they always say like, stick to the doctrine, stick to scriptures. Now, where this can get a little gray, and this isn't like right or wrong. I really want to be clear on that. And these are all my personal opinion. Should have thrown that out there. Um, is when we read books that are church books, but they aren't like published um, or recommended by like the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles. And those are amazing books. Like I have read so many books that are so incredible, have built my testimony that I love but I wouldn't necessarily teach from because they're one person's opinion. And even though maybe I feel the spirit and I agree with that opinion, it's yet to be confirmed as like doctrine. An example of this is like, what's it like in heaven, right? There's prophetic quotes on that. And then there's a lot of people who've had amazing experiences with that, but they aren't coming from the scriptures or, you know, the prophet of the church. And so while I don't discredit those experiences, they're not ones that I would teach from. I'd instead pull the quote from Joseph Smith and what he said about heaven, right? Or what our prophet has said about heaven in that example. So I know that one can like step on some toes, but when it comes to being a mouthpiece for giving a talk or prepping a lesson, we want to stick to doctrine. I also want to be very clear, like, I love these books. I study all of them. Like, there's so much good material out there, but when it comes to teaching and speaking, stick to doctrine. Practice, practice, practice. You know this, but before you turn me off, I want to give you some tips on how to practice because a lot of people believe that practicing for a talk is writing, like, writing out, like, oh, this is what I'm going to say and then reviewing it in their, their mind the day before and then giving their talk. I'm here to tell you that that's not practicing your talk. That is figuring out what you're gonna say. If you really want to deliver a killer talk at church, you've gotta practice. And when I was, like I really credit my parents with helping me establish these good habits because I think that as members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, Speaking in sacrament is such a common occurrence that we don't think twice about it and we don't treat it like this really cool experience that it is. And so we just get up there, we wing it, we maybe never practice our talk out loud and it's a real disservice. So when I was young, my parents, what they would do is they would give us a couple days to map out our talk and see what we wanted to say. And then they check in with us and say, okay, are you ready to give me your talk? And I'd say, yes or no, I need one more day or I can tonight, right? So we'd have a set time that I was gonna give my parents my talk and it was not Sunday, it was hopefully a couple days before. And so they literally would sit in the living room, we'd have the whole family there and I would like stand there and my mom would put like a little chair in front of us to be like a pretend pulpit because you've got to start to practice with knowing that there's something in front of you because that changes your whole environment. And I would give my whole talk like I was really giving it on Sunday. And I wouldn't stop and be like, oh, well, this part I need to fill in more. Like, 
No, if I made a mistake, I had to keep going because this was like a live performance. And so I'd give my whole talk and then my family would give feedback and they'd say, oh, that was great. Or I didn't understand this part. Or I felt like you needed another quote on this part. And then we'd be like, okay, redo it, rethink it. And then I would practice some more in front of a mirror. Um, if I was super nervous or it was like a long talk, I'd give it again in front of my parents. But it is vitally important to practice. And I think so many people are watching this and they're like, whoa, that's kind of overkill. Is it really? Like, I feel like speaking in sacrament is a true privilege. And it's something that we've just gotten a little common with. And so practice. You are not going to regret that practice when you're up there and you get butterflies. Because I public speak for a living and I still get butterflies when I go up there to speak for sacrament. It's nerve wracking to be in front of your peers and you'll never regret the practice. Like I mentioned before, be sure that you know some key elements of your practice, such as, am I taking notes up there with me? Am I taking my scriptures with me? I would encourage you that your scriptures, your quotes are written out fully in your piece of like paper that you're gonna bring up with you because like searching through your scriptures, it can just like bring a lot of problems. Maybe your bookmark falls out. Maybe because you're so nervous, you can't remember where second Nephi is. You know, like you just start to get so confused. So I don't give myself the room to err in that way. I don't take up my phone because how many times has our phone locked up on us, not open to the right app that we wanted or like shut down? You want to avoid all that. So just be sure that all your quotes, all your scriptures, anything you want to say word for word is actually written down in front of you. So practice with a piece of paper in front of you. Practice what it feels like. Am I going to hold it? Am I going to set it there? What am I going to do with my hands? Whatever you do, remember this rule. This is like a little bonus tip for you. You have one chance to touch the mic. One chance. And it's right when you start and they lower, raise the pulpit, whatever it is, depending on how tall you are, you have that moment to put it just right down here so it's not in your line of vision, it's not in a weird spot and people can't hear you. You put it there and you pretend it's not there. A lot of people, when they get nervous, they start to touch that mic and they start to move it all around and it becomes so distracting. So you have one chance to touch that mic and then don't worry about it again, okay? Also, like, don't fidget with, like, the things that you've got on the pulpit. That's why I only encourage you to bring up, like, a piece of paper. I would tell you to practice and know what, what are you going to do with your hands. Are you going to hold the pulpit? Is one up? Is one down? Are both down in your pockets? Like, how are you going to do this? Because a lot of people don't think about that. And then in the moment, they're like oh my gosh, what do I do with this piece of paper? And oh, my hair. Okay, I'm going to touch this mic. Like, we just get nervous. Those are nervous habits. We've all done it. I can tell you these tips because I've done them all wrong. So practice, practice, practice. This tip is for young men and young ladies. I want you to dress nice with minimal accessories. Now, my young men are like, I don't wear jewelry. Like, what in the world is that? Young men, I challenge you to really think about like how you're going to dress and I would dress very conservative. Um, this is not the time to wear anything like kind of out there or even that you're like, um, this is kind of a weird example, but sometimes like maybe you have like a bright yellow tie that is super cool and there's nothing wrong with that. But if you are are conscious and aware of it because you're like, oh man, my tie is so bright and nobody else was wearing a bright yellow neon tie. I don't want you to worry about that while you're speaking. So wear an outfit that you know is just a go-to. Wear an outfit that you know you're not gonna touch. Um, if wearing a watch is going to be something that you will play with or fidget with, don't wear it. Um, just like really think about like, how can I be very confident in how I look, but have like as less distractions as possible and not so much for your audience, but for you. Like don't put a lapel thing if you're gonna touch it. Don't, you know, like wear a shirt that's a little bit too tight because you wanna look skinnier, right? Or anything like that. Just dress very minimally. Young women, 
Same thing goes for you. I would not wear a dress that maybe, you know, looks gorgeous on you or you, there's some reason that you love it, but you're also a little bit conscious of it. You're like, oh, is this too tight? Or sometimes it rides up or I can't lift up my arms. Um, even though you won't really be doing those things while you're speaking, your brain will start to go there and be like, oh my gosh, do people notice that I sweat in this dress and it shows like, you just wanna wear clothes that you don't have to think about. That's the big goal. And I would encourage you to wear your hair, um, like down always looks really nice, right? But I'd encourage you to wear it kind of away from your, your, your face. So like a half ponytail, um, you could wear it up if you wanted. Um, I like to wear my hair down when I speak, so I make sure that it's off my shoulders and that um, sometimes I get like baby bangs. I'm sure you've seen them in all my videos. Like either you tuck those behind your ear, like the worst thing that you could do is give a talk and the whole time you're like, so yeah, this scripture and yeah, blah, blah, blah. Like do not play with your hair. And if your hair is going to become an accessory to you of like, I touch it and I'm gonna tell you the story and it's in my face, then wear it back. Because like there's so much going on already with your talk and you've worked so hard to get there that you don't want people to be distracted because you're distracted messing with your hair. So dress really nice, dress very confidently, but also just think minimal. Don't wear a necklace that can ride up and, and start to choke you or bother you. Don't wear bracelets that are gonna bang on the, the podium. Oh, huge one. Oh, ladies, please, I'm so glad I remember this. Do not wear, do not wear your highest, most beautiful, tallest high heels. Because without a doubt, we've all seen it where a girl is up there and she's giving her talk and she's doing so good and then she kind of like, and it's cause she's messing with her feet and one of them goes under with the heel and she's wearing like six inch heels. So she kind of like, right? And you have to regroup and it just looks really unprofessional. So don't wear shoes that you're not comfortable with. I truly, um, one, I really don't wear a lot of heels. My biggest heels like three inches and they're chunky because I never want to fall over when I'm speaking. And the temptation is, that we want to look our absolute best when we're speaking in sacrament. And so you'll want to wear your like really skinny stilettos that make you look super tall and nobody's going to see your legs. Nobody's going to notice how tall you are. People are paying attention to what is coming out of your mouth. So just be sure that you aren't wearing crazy high heels. Okay. If you follow those tips that I gave you today, I promise you, you are going to deliver a killer, amazing youth talk. Now, I want you, maybe you aren't giving a talk this week, maybe you've got one in the future. I want you to start to notice and pick out these, um, these tips, these skills, when you are at church or when you're watching church remotely because people can, can fall into these traps very easily. And I'm not pretending I'm above these. Like I still sometimes find myself like messing with my hair and I'm like, oh no, I should have worn it back, right? So just start to be aware and start to notice what you like that Spears did, um, maybe what they did that you were like, oh, that that's where I disconnected from them. That's where I, I started to wonder more about like what was for lunch than what was their message about. Start to notice those things because you can start to take those and say, okay, well, I'm gonna do that same thing in my talk, right? Or I'm gonna do something similar because it worked really well. Speaking is all about learning, seeing, and doing. So. I wish you the best of luck. I'm so curious to know what are some of your speaking like fears, tips, topics. If you need any help, please DM me on Instagram. I'm always trying to reach out and coach individuals and I'm crazy about speaking. I'm crazy about the gospel of Jesus Christ. So this is a perfect one. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Cannot wait to see you in my next video. Abby J out.